Berlin terrorist Anis Amri may have had some help in carrying out the terror attack on the Christmas market that killed 12 people. Well, basically what happens is in France and Germany, the two most powerful countries in the European Union, the ideological left controls the intellectual space. They own the media, the universities, the think tanks. And so they tell people this propaganda that, hey, look, if you criticize the way we're handling the migrant crisis, you're Islamophobic and a racist. Basically a big basket of deplorables. That's led to disaster after disaster, and Europe is being killed by political correctness. I just got back from two weeks in Europe, Trish. I spoke at think tanks in Hungary, Slovakia, and Finland. I met with some members of cabinet and they realize it's a disaster but what has to happen is France and Germany have to take the intellectual space pack from the left we need conservative media conservative think tanks in the biggest countries in the EU to shift the battle do you actually believe this I mean 68 percent of Germans don't see a link between the ISIS attack that happened in Berlin and the fact that Angela Merkel has welcomed into that country more than a million migrants who are displaced, who are living in refugee centers, many of whom are not working, and by the way, bring with them uh, an ideology that is very much at odds with European culture. Well, Trish, it sounds crazy, but it's believable because the people in Germany and France, the two biggest and most powerful countries in the EU, are told that, hey, look, if you criticize the migrant crisis, if you say anything bad about Islam, you're Islamophobic and a racist. It shuts down the debate. Wait, 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 so and it here's what craziness. I'm wondering, though. I mean, you, you think about Brexit, for example, right, and how all the polling data was so, so wrong. I'm wondering, to a certain extent, if this is just plain old wrong. In other words, if those Germans... Deep down, they say to themselves, gee, I don't really like Angela Merkel's policies, and I, I worry that this has created this environment, but no one is willing to say it, J.D. Yeah, it's a nightmare. I mean, we have to have people on both sides of the Atlantic speaking up against this craziness. So I think that uh, we have to just push the Germans and push the France to, French to p wake up to what's going on. I think the people there are eventually waking up when they see these nightmares. Look, this Tunisian guy was 24 years old, Trish. He spent four years in Italian prisons because he tried to burn down a refugee camp. Yet the Germans wouldn't even deport him because they said, well, he doesn't have a passport. How could we deport him back to Tunisia? That is crazy. It has to change. And we should be pushing our French and German allies to do the right thing. Yeah, and you think about sort of the cover-up actions that happen as well. I mean, we saw that last New Year's Eve, right, in Cologne. Uh, where there were hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of women that were sexually assaulted or attacked, and yet there was this effort amongst members of the media and the government to kind of make it all hush-hush, hoping they could sweep it under the rug and it would just go away. But the reality is the problems that Europe now faces, and frankly we face as well, they're not going away. So it's good that uh, folks like yourself are speaking up about it. J.D., thank you so much. Good to have you here. Thanks, Trish. President